Good evening and welcome to my How Healthy Are You weekly conference call. I'm Dr. Thomas Brewer. I'm a PhD chemist. And for this evening's call, I'm going to be talking about something that's been in the news and it's also had some recent research studies, namely by a doctor known as uh, Maria Fernandez. Uh, and this is about LDL cholesterol uh, from eggs and whether the size of the LDL particles matter. So in the past, I've been pretty vocal about saying that eggs are a great source of protein and the cholesterol increase that you get from consuming eggs is mainly the good HDL cholesterol. Turns out that wasn't completely true. Eggs do raise both LDL, the bad cholesterol, and HDL, the good cholesterol. But it actually raises LDL more. So you end up getting a higher increase or a greater increase in your LDL numbers when you consume eggs and a smaller increase in your HDL numbers. Now, we'd love to have high HDL cholesterol and low LDL cholesterol. Most people have the exact opposite. And when that happens, when your LDL cholesterol is high, you have a much increased risk of coronary heart disease, coronary artery disease, and stroke, and, and dying from heart disease. So the issue is not just cholesterol, but what type of cholesterol. So it turns out, though, that the egg industry had some studies done by this Maria Fernandez, and she had said that large, fluffy LDL cholesterol is less bad for you than the small LDL cholesterol. So these are just larger particles of LDL cholesterol. Well, it turns out that both are bad, and the difference is, isn't too much. Uh, a 44% increased risk of heart disease versus a 63% chance of uh, increased risk of heart disease. In either case, I wouldn't want any of those numbers for an increased risk of coronary artery disease. So in general, LDL cholesterol, which stands for low density lipoprotein, and because it's low density, it oxidizes easier. And LDL cholesterol absolutely causes atherosclerosis, which is plaque deposits in our arteries. The larger particles of LDL were also considered to be protective, meaning that they're not only less bad than these small LDL particles, but they're somewhat protective. It turns out that wasn't true either. A while ago, about seven years ago, there was a 2013 study and it revealed that the choline, and that's spelled C-H-O-L-I-N-E, it's, it's a molecule. The choline from eggs increases our risk of stroke and heart disease. So up until that point, people were kind of on the fence about saying whether eggs were good or bad, but it turns out that the choline, and it's pretty significant in eggs, is an increased risk factor for heart disease. Then the egg industry started telling people that there's antioxidants in eggs, and these are the ones good for your eyes. They're called lutein and zeaxanthine. So they would say, well, eat eggs because eggs are good for your vision. Well, it turns out the amount of antioxidants in eggs is trace amount. It's minuscule. The amount of lutein and zeaxanthine in nine eggs equals that in one teaspoon of spinach. And, and most people eat way more than a teaspoon of spinach. Uh, 
So that isn't a good argument either. The problem I've always mentioned is when I look at someone's blood and I see plaque or cholesterol crystals in their blood, that's a form of oxidized LDL. And I've always said that's the worst cholesterol. And the studies all the way up to last year's studies all say the same thing. Oxidized LDL cholesterol is the worst thing. So I still recommend eggs are something to either eliminate or greatly decrease um, your consumption because they do increase our risk for uh, LDL oxidation, meaning plaque or uh, crystals in the blood. As we age, this seems to get worse. I've known people when they're young that ate quite a few eggs and their blood looked pretty good. Once they got into their 50s, their cholesterol numbers were going up. And when I looked at their blood that used to not have any plaque or cholesterol crystals, it started having plaque and cholesterol crystals. So be careful with eggs, especially as you age. Okay, a couple of announcements. A few days ago, I made five more videos that will be linked to future newsletters. Uh, one is on thyroid, where I use the periodic table and tell you how you can heal your thyroid uh, for no cost. I also have a video on probiotics and prebiotics, what they are and the best way to get them. And I've included three breathing videos. So the first video has techniques one, two, and three, or phase one, phase two, phase three. And then there's another video with just phase four and another video with phase five. And as you can surmise, phase five is a lot more challenging and a bigger commitment on your part than a phase one breathing. And finally, I've got my dates for my trip to Brentwood, Pennsylvania, or not Brentwood, Pennsylvania. <laughs> uh, I'm going to Brentwood this weekend, um, but Myerstown, Pennsylvania, it'll be Friday, May 29th, Saturday, May 30th, and Monday, June 1st. The blood screenings are going to be about 45 to 60 minutes in duration. The retest pricing is $140. First time uh, pricing is $190. Now, you'll see that's different than in the office. Right now, when you come to my office in Las Vegas, the pricing is three blood screenings for $275. But that seems to be reserved for people that can get to Las Vegas uh, or else they live in Las Vegas. So the other pricing takes into account my uh, travel costs. Uh, still very affordable, though, for a complete blood test. When I'm in Pennsylvania and also when I'm in Brentwood, California, I can also bring my kits for food allergy testing. And the kit includes everything I need to get the drops of blood I need to do the food allergy testing. I do have to send that, send it away. It takes about two weeks. The cost for that is $295. I had mentioned that on a previous newsletter. But when I do travel, I can bring the kits with me. They're very light and small. And I can then do the test for people instead of uh, trying to have them do it themselves. I've got all the mailing materials too, so it'll make it very straightforward. Okay, so that's all I have for today. I'm going to go off lecture mode. And does anyone have any questions for this evening's call?
Uh, this is Debbie. I have a question. Yes. Um, should we just call you to schedule? Call right. Retest? Yes. Yeah. So the best way to schedule is to call me directly, and then I can schedule people for Friday, Saturday, or Monday. And because uh, I know a lot of the people are in groups and they want to have their family done sequentially. So, yes, that's the best way to do it is to call me directly. Okay. If I don't answer, or just leave a message. I'll get back to you and, and schedule the times. Okay. And then can you also include um, the address again as to where you'll be performing? Right. That'll be in also in a newsletter, but uh, I, I'm planning to be at the same place, which is the Holiday Inn Express, and it's the it's the only one there in Myerstown. Okay. Right on the main road that runs east west through the city. It's. Okay. Close to Lebanon. In fact, I wonder if the address is actually Lebanon instead of Myerstown. It might be. So it's right near the border between Myerstown and Lebanon. Okay. Any other questions? Hey, Dr. Brewer. Um, can yeah. You talk about, uh, can you talk about hair loss? not like uh, where you lose a bunch of it, but just like fallout. Can you address that, please? Yeah. So there's a number of reasons we lose our hair. The common one that you'll see runs in families is genetic. There is not much you can do about that one. The others, though, the other causes are pretty much stress-related. When we're under stress, a lot of bad things happen to our body because we start getting inflammation and a weakened immune system. And I had mentioned about how bad inflammation was in a previous newsletter. It's really the beginning of... All of our problems can be traced back to inflammation, and then what you need to do is go back another step and figure out what caused the inflammation. And stress is a great contributor to inflammation. When I release these videos, you're going to want to look at the videos on breathing because the breathing techniques are one of the best ways for us to cope with stress. Other than eliminating the cause of the stress, the stressor, um, your best way to cope and to stay healthy is to utilize these breathing techniques, and you're going to have five to choose from. So uh, there's something for everybody. Now, another cause of hair loss is lack of some amino acids and copper. These amino acids and copper are in the perfect ratio in the Enriching Gifts amino acid formula. In fact, that formula was designed initially more for hair, hair, skin, and nails, but mainly hair um, above and beyond muscle building. Now, it does both, but it, it really specializes in helping one's hair. Um, so that those supplements with our amino acids and copper um, are quite beneficial. And you would notice a, an increase in just a few months. You, you should notice um, healthier hair, slightly thicker, obviously less falling out. I always refer people to the utilization of multiple techniques when you're trying to solve a problem, meaning 
do you really want to know what really worked for you as long as you solve the problem? So I would utilize breathing techniques. I would take the amino acids. And that way, you're going to maximize your potential for having better hair and thicker hair and, and less hair loss. So that's, that's what I have for hair loss above and beyond a genetic factor. Okay, one thank thing you very much. Okay, one thing I wanted to add to that, you'll see people that smoke cigarettes and they have great hair. Uh, cigarette smoking is not linked to hair loss. You would think it is. You'd think it causes everything that's bad. But uh, hair loss is not one of them. People that smoke quite a few cigarettes a day, their hair could be way better than a family member's. So keep that in mind, too. Um, Sometimes we can be as, as healthy as we can be and, and still lose our hair. And usually that cause is stress-related. Or, again, mineral deficiencies like the copper. So, okay. Any other Thank questions? Uh, yes. My daughter... Yeah. Uh, my daughter broke out in a, a case of boils, and, and that I know that is stress related too. Uh, I wondered what you would recommend for that. So sometimes when somebody breaks out into boils or hives, sometimes that is a food allergy. Sometimes it's a contact allergy, meaning she brushed against something outside and uh, she was very allergic. And sometimes that is fungus trying to leave the body through an organ called the skin. So you'll have to try to figure out what the cause was. Those are the three major causes, especially if it's something new, right? Like she didn't have this previously. Right. So, um, again, I mean, it, it could be a food allergy, but, you know, you, you want to find out. Have you eaten any foods that you don't normally eat? Or have you gone to a restaurant and had something you don't normally eat? And, and of course, the contact, you know, she may have brushed against something outside that caused that. Um, and what and then the, the fungus too. Fungus, we, we get fungus in our bodies. It can even be airborne and we ingest it. Um, and it, uh, back to the inflammation, you, you end up with inflammation and, uh, you know, the hives and the swelling and the boils, all uh, an example of inflammation. Not to mention stress is, is another way to get that. I've seen stress cause people's lips to look like a duck, like Donald Duck. I mean, th their lips just are just incredibly swollen, and it wasn't food. It wasn't anything they contacted. It wasn't fungus. All it was was stress. They were worrying about something. Yes. And yeah. Well, but would you put a silver, a collineal silver? Would that right? Be if the cause of the boils or hives is due to fungus or yeast, you'll know because the silver will get rid of it. In fact, it'll get rid of it in a day or two uh, once you use it topically. Uh -huh. But if it doesn't get rid of it, you can cross that off your list of causes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's one way to, to determine if the cause is yeast or fungus trying to leave the body through the skin. Uh-huh. 
Yeah, okay. We'll we'll keep trying that then. Okay. Thank you. Yo, you're welcome. Is that all the questions we have for this evening's call? Okay, so I want to thank everyone for being on the call, and I appreciate the questions. I will be in Northern California at the end of this week. I get back next Monday, but I should be back in time to do next week's conference call. Until then, uh, good evening, and uh, stay healthy. Good night, everybody. Thanks. Good night.